With all the attention on the topic, why is mooring line recoil still such a challenge for the shipping industry? Like many industries, the shipping industry has advanced and expanded in recent decades. New routes, larger ships, more ships and more shipyards, new terminals and new technologies. While mooring technologies have evolved as well, the function and strength requirements are largely the same. So let's take a closer look at the factors at play. A significant amount of energy is absorbed and stored in large mooring systems. This can't be avoided. After all, this is the primary function of the mooring system. However, ships have gotten larger and ports and terminals have been placed in more exposed locations. This creates real challenges, managing loads in all scenarios, optimizing mooring patterns and balancing tension across all lines, just to name a few. These all lead to a greater chance of tensions exceeding their theoretical design limits. While not designed to serve as a weak link, mooring lines are the weakest components in most mooring systems. Furthermore, they experience the most friction and wear of any component in operation. So while prevention is always top priority, it shouldn't come as a surprise when a mooring line breaks, nor should it be assumed that the line itself has somehow failed. After all, safety margins for mooring lines are relatively small compared to many other industrial rope applications. This reality has to be understood and addressed to improve safety outcomes. So how can operators reduce the probability of mooring lines being overloaded? There are three key ways to address this. First, decrease loads. There are many operational challenges we won't be able to cover here, but lower loads of course mean higher safety margins. Second, increase line strength and durability. This sounds appealing, but requires heavier, more expensive ropes, and in some cases could make hardware incompatible. Third, reduce risk through selecting the right products and operational best practices. For example, not warping mooring lines or better balancing line tensions during berthing. As you can see, most of these options create challenges to implement as they involve a range of stakeholders across design, construction, and operation of any type of ship. Organizations across the shipping industry are working to improve guidelines and regulations on this topic. However, these improvements will take time and may also be challenging for some existing fleets to adopt. Because of this, we feel the industry still needs solutions for mitigating the risks associated with line degradation and overloading. As you pursue safety improvements to your mooring system, it's important to understand what creates these safety risks in the first place. So remember, first, mooring lines are the most likely component to degrade and be overloaded. Second, vessel mooring systems are designed on a relatively small safety margin and most shipping operations don't have control over environmental dynamics. This means actual loads can exceed design limits, sometimes without warning. Third, finding solutions to reduce the risks associated with such mooring system failures requires a holistic analysis of your system design and operations. Finally, seek more information about how recoil safety products will work in your operation.